Hi, friends. Great to see you. Will Davis Jr. with good news today. I pray you're well. Happy Monday to you. So we're in this section of Genesis 3. By the way, please send cards, comments, questions, complaints to Senior Pastor, srpastor at acfellowship.org. I love hearing from you. Okay, so we're over the falls, and we're in the rapids. We've gone over the falls, and the bottom is falling out, and judgment is being cast, and wow, here we go. We're in this thick, thick, thick section of Genesis, chapter 3. The conversation with Adam and Eve in the sense of interrogation and interrogatives, where are you, what are you doing, who told you you were naked, etc., is over. And the last thing we left it with on Friday was Eve turned, basically said the devil made me do this, the serpent made me do this. So let's begin. What follows are three judgments, three statements of condemnation. First to the devil, the serpent, second to the woman, and last to the man. And we're going to take these in turn. We'll spend a couple days here probably, if not more, on the statement to the, the serpent and to Satan because it's very profound. It has a prophecy of Christ in it, curiously. Then the Lord God said, Genesis 3, 14. Um, then the Lord God said to the serpent, it's 14 and 15, because you have done this, cursed are you more than all livestock, more than any animal of the field. On your belly you will go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. And I will make enemies of you and the woman, and your offspring and her descendants. And he will bruise you on the head, and you will bruise him on the heel. And then he moves to the woman. All right, so this is interesting to read about because it sounds like, my friends, it sounds like there are two different judgments here, one given to the serpent specifically and one given to Satan, verse 14, being to the reptile, the serpent, as a reminder to us every time you see a snake, don't mess with God. And then the more profound one to the devil. Just some things to think about. When God was looking for Adam and Eve, he began with questions. Adam, where are you? Why did you hide yourself? Who told you you were naked? Did you eat from the tree you shouldn't eat? Eve, what is this you have done? Notice he doesn't ask the serpent any questions. There's no, there's no discussion here. He, clearly, the, the reptile or the serpent or the devil is on a different level in relationship with God than Adam and Eve. He's in a he's not in a relationship. It's it's a relate it's a lesser level. It's a subservient level. Where God says to his offspring, Adam and Eve, what have you done? He says he says no questions to the serpent. He just begins with this is how this is going to be. Cursed are you. No conversation, no dialogue, no help me understand. Because there was not a relationship there. It was completely, and this gives us just a snippet of insight of how God deals with that in the angelic and uh, mysterious realm of the spiritual realm. There's not a, hey, what do you think about this? Is this is how it's going to be? Complete authority, complete domination, complete control. You are cursed. With us, it's what do you help me understand? Because there's a relationship. He's trying to grow us and teach us and help us learn. Not so with the enemy. A couple of interesting points here. Um, cursed are you more than all the livestock? So. Uh, remember this Genesis, uh, early in Genesis chapter 3, it says that the serpent was more shrewd than any beast of the field. He was elevated. He was beautiful. He was attractive to look at. And he was really, really smart and, and witty and, and cunning. And now, because of what he's done, he is placed in a subservient role below all livestock, even cattle, who aren't known for their wit. Okay, So he's completely cast down. Um, cursed are you more than all the livestock of the field um, and more than beasts of any other animal. Um, on your belly you will go and dust you will eat all the days of your life. It sounds like, and scholars don't agree on this, it sounds like that what Eve encountered, and we talked about this before, was something other than something on its belly. She wouldn't have known to be afraid of a snake because snakes didn't have bad reputations back then. But the, the curse on your belly you will go implies to me an uprightness. Um, and the Bible does speak of flying serpents. So I think what Eve encountered was very beautiful and very attractive and very upright and able to look her in the eye 
and very majestic and very alluring. And all that is stripped away. And now the, the reptile, as a symbol of judgment on what happened in sin, is condemned to literally eat dust, to crawl on its belly um, all the days of its life. As a constant reminder, when you see snakes, of what happened. Um, remember, the snake has the, the two-pronged tongue. And the, and it, the old saying was, you speak with fork and tongue, because that's what the devil did. He lied. And he spoke with two meanings. Anyway, so much there. I think it's really important to note here that there's no grace offered. And there's not going to be. To the, to the angelic fallen being, the devil, there's no grace offered. Grace is going to be offered to humans. There's no hope. There's no grace. Just judgment. Pretty profound stuff. Okay, so tomorrow I want to delve into this concept of cursed are you. What is a curse? It's the first time it's spoken here in Scripture, and we need to talk about it to understand because it's used 200 times in the Old Testament. Tomorrow I'm going to talk about the meaning of a curse because a curse implies there's also blessing, and blessing is what we pursue. Lots to think about, friends. Lord, bless my wonderful audience today. I pray for your favor over them. Help us, Lord, to, to heed your word. And I thank you that there's a relationship we have with you, and we're not just subservient um, robots told what to do as those in your armies in the angelic realm. We are absolutely in relationship with you and get to choose. And you ask us questions because you want us to learn. Thank you for that. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. See you tomorrow.